Hi everyone. Water, air, lava, ketchup, they flow, they are fluid. Fluids are not just the stuff that fills up our cups or blow through our fans. They are unseen architects of our planet's behavior. Airplane fly to volcano eruptions and even how your heart bombs flow. This, uh, this is the fluid mechanics. Fluid mechanics is behaves when they are chilling fluid statics or moving like fluid dynamics. Now we are not going to hit you with boring definitions. Nope, we are doing this with big ideas and surprisingly delightful physics. Now let's buckle up and let's start. What is fluid? Let's start with the basics. What exactly counts as a fluid? Fluid is any substance that deforms continuously under a sheer force. But what does it mean? If you try to slide one part of it over another, it won't resist, it will flow. Fluid comes in two flavors, like gases and liquids. Hey, what about jelly, sand, and toothpaste? Ah, uh, now you are getting to the weirdest. Substances that behave like fluids, conditions, and solids in other cold non-Newtonian fluids, or more generally, complex of fluids. Now let's talk about the properties of fluids which is uh, these are their core properties, the fluid DNA, if you will say. Properties, first one is density, compressibility, vibration, surface tension, and viscosity. Let's start with density. Density is the mass per unit volume. From water, which is equal to 1000 kg per meter cubic, and air, which is equal to 1.2, mercury 13600. A dense fluid carries more mass. Think of it, how tight is the stuff inside the fluid from pressure exerted on it. And the more dense fluid will be under and sink differently compared to lighter ones. Every time you f swim, float, or sink, density is behind it. Compressibility is second property, which is describes how much the fluid volume changes under pressure. Liquids are almost incompressible. Well, that's why hydraulics are most powerful. Push one end and the other side pushes back instantly, while gases compresses easily. That's why air in tires, balloons can be squished and still springy. We define compressibility with the bulk of modulus, which is equal to negative difference in pressure over difference in volume over first volume. And it determines how fluid behaves under some under high pressures or rapid changes, things like explosions or deep sea diving. Third one, which is evaporation. Evaporation happens when the molecules on a liquid surface gain enough energy to escape into the gas phase. It cools things. Why sweating worse? And it how dry we dry clothes regulate climate. Depends on the temperature, pressure, and humidity. Third one, which is the surface tension. Ever seen a droplet over a leaf? That's the surface tension. Surface tension acts action, which is a cohesive force between liquid molecules at the surface, causing them to stick together causing them to stick together as you see here like stretched elastic sheets. Helps insects to walk on water, forms raindrops, and make bubbles around. It's a microscale force that creates a microscale beauty. And this is a formula to how to get the delta H, which is equal to the delta height. It's a microscale force that creates a microscale beauty. And the force equal to sigma multiplied by L, and we can say which is the mass multiplied by gravitational acceleration. Finally, viscosity. Viscosity is a fluid's internal resistance to flow. What, what does it mean? Let's simplify it. As you see here, the shark in water and the drag forces and the velocity of it, the viscosity is a fluid internal resistance to flow. As high viscosity equals the thick and slow like honey, and low viscosity equals runny and fast like water. It causes the bimolecular friction, the internal tag of four between layers of fluid, and shear stress is directly proportional to the rate of a change of a shear strain. As you see here, if this is the formula to calculate the force, which is equal to coefficient of viscosity multiplied by velocity gradient, and it can be measured by kilogram per meter per second or pascal per second, and have other measurements, which is pause and centipause. Also, you have a kinematic viscosity, which is equal to mu over rho, and the effect of temperature on gas on liquid, which is uh, like you see here, air as increasing the temperature, the viscosity will be increased, while increasing the temperature of liquid as oil, the viscosity will be decreases. And we have Newtonian fluids which is constant viscosity, like water and air.
while non-Newtonian fluids, which is viscosity changes like ketchup. We have a behavior of non-Newtonian fluids. You have several types like Bingham plastic, shear thinning, Newtonian, and shear thickening. Bingham plastic like toothpaste and mayonnaise, while shear thinning like ketchup and paints. And finally, shear thickening, and which is like cornstarch. So every time you pour or splash, viscosity decides how dramatic it gets. Now, fluid statics. Fluid statics is all about fluids at rest. No movement, such as cell. But even in the resting state, fluids can exert forces supporting fluid objects and build the pressure. The variation of pressure is due to only the weight of fluid. As pressure is a fluid, pressure equal to the force per area. This is the bread and butter of fluid statics. If you apply a force over a small area, you get high pressure. Pressure acts equally in all directions and increases with depth. This is due to the weight of fluid above. In most fluid applications, we care about the pressure difference rather than the absolute pressure difference. And the pressure difference absolute equal to the grade the pressure difference. And this is the formula of how getting the pressure at any point we know, like a pressure depth minus to the pressure node, surface pressure minus rho, density minus g, gravity minus h equal depth. Okay, that's why submarines have a thicker wall as they go deeper. Now, measuring pressure, pressure measuring devices. First of all is the manometer. It's a U-shaped tube with fluid. Pressure difference shows as height difference. Secondly, barometer measures atmospheric pressure using mercury columns. And now let's talk about hydrostatic forces on sur surfaces. As you see here, when a fluid presses on a wall or surface, it exerts a hydrostatic force. This force depends on the pressure, which is depends on depth, the area of surface, the orientation of surface, Cool fact, the total force doesn't act as a centroid, it acts at a point called the center of pressure. Now, this is the formula, which is, simpli we can simplify it to, that's the pressure at the point multiplied by the area of the wall. And if the wall is horizontal, the center of pressure will be the center of the wall. What if you have multiple fluids with multiple densities? Now, we can use the pressure head. And other one, we can use a pressure prism, which is equal to the, we get the areas of each place and some summation of it. And this is the forces on the circular curves, which is F, F horizontal forces equal to the vertical forces, each one multiplied by the distance between it and the center of curve, like dams, and this is application of it. Now, buoyance and Archimedes principle. Now, the juicy part. Why things float? Archimedes discovered that in any object submerged in a fluid experiences an upward force equal to the weight of fluid it displaces. I'm tired. What? Binding force. If binding force bigger than weight, objects will float. If binding force less than of weight, objects will sink. That's let Fischler, Hoover, and scuba divers control their depths. And as you see here, there's a floating body, suspended bodies, and sinking bodies. Stability. Boats must have their center of gravity below the center of buoyancy to avoid flipping. And as you see here, the BM is the line of center of gravity of the emerged part to the intersecting point between the line of center of gravity of the ship and the center of gravity of the emerged port. And should be bigger than the PG to be stable. Now let's talk about the moving mass of stationary fluids. And as you see here, if we imagine a pipe in a truck which is moving upward, uh, towards or backwards, mass will flow through momentum changes. The force is change needed to change momentum equal to the rate of change of momentums. And this is the formula and uh, proof of the rule. Now let's talk about the rotating floats. Spin a packet of water fast. It rises at the edges and dips in the center, forming paraploid. Why? Because rotation introduces a centrifugal effect. Fluids move outwards, but gravity pulls down. The balance creates the curve, and it makes parabolic mirrors. Fluids move outward, but gravity pulls down. The balance creates a curve, like the mixer and the washing machine. And now let's talk about the fluid dynamics. When fluids stop chilling and start moving, Things get beautifully complicated, but don't worry, everything here is under control. Before we jump into mass, let's visualize flow types. 
Imagine a flock of birds flying in a neat, organized lines. Each bird fo- follows the one ahead, never crashing to others or taking weird turns. That's what we call laminar flow and smooth, predictable, and orderly. Now imagine the same birds start panicking. That's what we call turbulent flow. And the laminar flow are parallel and non crossing calm rivers, smooth air over airplanes wing. Turbulent flow streamlines, gonets, transitional somewhere in between, like toddlers, or that's usually calm but occasionally through the spaghetti at all. The predictator of flow mode swings, which is called the Reynolds number, and equal to the inertia force over the viscous force. And if it's less than the 2000, it will be equal to laminar, and if it's greater than 4000, it will be turbulent. The continuity equation. Let's say you are sipping bubble tea through a straw, big part of the straw equal to low speed and the narrow part equal to the super slow. But why? Because the same amount of tea has to get through even when the pipe changes sides. And that's the continuity equations, which is A1 V1 equal to A2 V2. And it's all about conservation of mass. Whether flows in must flow out, if the pipe gets in error, fluid must speed up to keep the flow constant. Like garden hose, nozzle, and rockets. This is a plumbing version of traffic management. And the pipe gets thinner speed up, pipes gets wider slow down, no rear ending allowed. Now let's talk about Bernoulli's equations, fluids and energy budget. This is the E equal MC squared of fluid Daniel Bernoulli. Swiss mathematician realized if we speed up, pressure drops, and if we gain height, pressure drops. Wait, energy is just moving around. Now, this is a formula, just like a bank account. Energy might change form, but the total balance stays the same. Real world superpowers of Bernoulli. And planes fly, wing or curving on top. Air goes faster, pressure drops, lift happens. Baseball curves, spin changes air speed on each side, pressure difference, magnus effect. And like a carburetor's work, air speeds up, pressure drops, sucks in fuel. But real life isn't perfect. We have friction, turbulence, and energy losses, which brings us to energy lines, which is TAL and HZL. And the TAL is a total energy line, and HZL is a hydro- hydraulic grade line, thus the pressure and plus elevation, while the total energy line is the pressure, kinetic, and elevation in one line. If pumps add energy, TL rises. If a turbine extracts energy, TL drops. Fluid engineer literally draws these. And think of a TL as a full story. GL is what's left after motion takes its cut. Now, let's talk about flow measurement tools. Now we understand how fluid behaviors. So let's measure it. We have a venturi meter, which by now fluid speed up, pressure drop. Use pressure sensors to calculate velocity. Like, and this is the formulas of how we using the venturi meter. And this is a venturi meter in real life. And second one is is the orifice meter, like a budget venturi meter, more temperance and energy loss, but cheap and effective. And this is the formula and its shape. Now let's talk about the pipe tube, which is used on airplanes to measure air speed. And one whole face the air flows and gets the total pressure. Another hole reads the static pressure, as you see here. Now Bernoulli assumes that incompressible flow, no friction, steady flow and no energy added or lost. But real life is messy, as the viscous losses turns into energy into heat, and compressible gases like air at high speed changes density, turbulence add chaos. That's why engineers apply correction factors, and why computational fluid dynamic CFD exists. We let computers simulate the messy stuff. Now you see what is the equation principle used. Let's see it in our real world. Ever wonder why you shower and suddenly freezing when someone flashes the toilet? Them so dynamics. In your house, water moves through pipes like highways. When someone opens a valve like a toilet, the flow changes. And more demand equal pressure drop elsewhere. That pressure drop equal to less hot water to your shower, less hot shower equal to Antarctic surprise. And engineers have to design pipe diameters using continuity equations and pressure head and Bernoulli, friction losses using TLL and HZL. And how planes fly, the wing, Bernoulli and lift. 
Air goes faster over the curved top as we said before of the wing. Pressure drops and net upward force equal to the lift. Bombs and turbines. Bombs add energy, raise fluid, fight gravity and acceleration, while turbines float, flow, suspend blades, convert kinetic energy into mechanical work, and also the blood circulatory system, which is the continuity equation. How we calculate all of that? CFD, which is simulating the real world, when math gets too messy to solve the paper, we call in a big guns, computers, or computational fluid dynamics. It is used as a digital simulations or to solve fluid equations across millions of tiny points, simulate blood flow through arteries, modeling airflow around race cars, and other things. CFD, which is used continuity and the Navy stroke equations fluid version of Newton's law and the real world data and Bernoulli's equation. It's how we design the future with fluids. Finally, ah, oh, I'm so tired. Fluids are things that flow, like the highway, and we uncovered that the deep connection between pressure, speed, and height, why boat float, why plane flies, that, that even our, your own body is a marvel of fluid engineering. And now Bernoulli's, and how like con Bernoulli's and continuity are the grammar of fluid motion. Fluid mechanics is the invisible engine of nature, industry, medicine, and space lift. Whether it's a tornado of hard valve or your morning shower, it's all fluid mechanics all the time. Anyways, you are now an Einstein of the fluids. So next time you see a river sink or rainstorm, you'll see equations and beauty. And maybe invisible Bernoulli smiling behind it all. Comment to tell me what the next video won't make me more. But you, hey, subscribe, like and share. See you next video. Bye.